Let's get into the modalities. The modalities are the different ways to integrate grammatry into the full arch surgical workflow. And we're gonna talk about a few. The first one, which is screws and tads, that's the same type of process that, uh, that you would use for photogrammetry. The same type, sort of. And I think you're gonna like the twist. Screws or OptiSplint uh, arch tracers, as we call them. This modality is very, uh, very familiar in the marketplace if you've been uh, involved in photogrammetry, if you've, um, if you've used a digital protocol uh, to make restorations. So in this protocol, you will place screws somewhere in the mouth or the uh, grammetry uh, arch tracers. You can see these here. We'll have another image of it coming up in a minute. But the key here is that this is the beginning of surgery. You know, in this case, it's flapped. Over here on the right, the arch tracers, you have to flap first to set these. Screws, you just place them here in the retromolar pads, or you place them back in the palate, or just beyond where the suturing is gonna be, where the, uh, the, the flap is gonna be, or down in the palate. And those screws remain in the surgery during, uh, in the mouth during the entire surgery. That is key to saving the bite, All right? This is, this is uh, prior to um, digital impressions being captured uh, with the bite. Now these screws can be purchased from a couple different companies. Uh, Salvin sells a nice screw with a big head. Osteogenics, both these companies sell really good kits uh, with all kinds of lengths. If you're going to purchase our grammetry arch tracers, then you're going to want to purchase a 10 to 12 millimeter long screw. Those are available through either one of these companies. The head needs to be uh, wider than two millimeters. Uh, we will be inventorying a screw soon that we can include along with the arch tracer, but for now, 10 to 12 millimeters. On the uh, day of surgery, at a minimum, if we're printing, at a minimum, you'll need a kit. You'll need the OptiSplint kit. You'll need, uh, um, what we are recommending is a stellar material and you wanna purchase the white, not the pink. You wanna purchase the white because scanners pick up white better than pink. You'll need, a, I mean, you'll need some other things, but for the, <laughs> for the OptiSplint portion of it, uh, um, some um, forceps, a curing light, and really what you see here on the screen is what you need. And then of course, if you're gonna print, you need a printer. But this is just to do the intraoral capture. Those are the simple tools. Now this is where we turn what uh, everybody in the marketplace has learned on its head. This is where, uh, th this is where the car can fly. In a surgery, what you're going to do for a surgical case is you're going to place the three screws. You decide, you know, upper, lower, palate, uh, distal. You'll, you'll place the screws and you're gonna scan the upper, lower, and the bite. Okay, the bite in uh, centric is what normal, normally comes over. We can open the bite in software a little bit, a couple millimeters, a few millimeters. If you wanna do a leaf gauge or a centric relation bite and you can capture that, that's fine. Otherwise, we'll open the bite. All right. So. Screws are in, patient is scanned. Now, you go through the entire surgery, okay, all the way until you have the, the multi-unit abutments in the mouth and you perform the OptiSplint looting in the mouth. We'll discuss that. But what I, wanna, what, what I really want to um, convey here is that these are the three simple records. You're gonna scan the full arch you're gonna capture the healing colors in sutured tissue with the screws, and those are the two intraoral scans, and your patient is done. The extraoral scan will be of the OptiSplint on a bench under, under a controlled environment with your iOS scanner. You don't have patient breath, you don't have blood moving, you don't have sutures, you don't have anything, you don't have anything going on behind it or under it that's gonna throw off the scanner you're gonna have a pure scan on the bench top. That is where the precision comes in that nobody else offers. You cannot do this with photogrammetry. You cannot do this with looting uh, a bunch of scan bodies together, right? A bunch of healing collars together. It's just not feasible. So this comes out of the mouth and you scan it and this is what you upload. Let's go through a case. Patient is ready for surgery. Full face, full smile picture. Now, maybe they're a little nervous on the day of surgery, so maybe you took this picture, you know, uh, last week. Full face, full smile. We want the soft tissue, we want the lips, we want the eyes, we want the whole 
We want the patient experience. We want the patient anatomy. So get us a nice photograph. We were going to design this case behind the lips. Then put the, put the screws in, put the screws in and scan. Now I'm going to give you a little different option here that is being taught in a lot of these, uh, these courses. The week before, two weeks before the patient comes in, scan the upper, scan the lower, we will design you a, uh, a smile. We can give you some idea of bone reduction levels if you'd like. Uh, we can give you tooth position. We can really help set the case up for success because you know, this patient came for aesthetics and this patient only has five teeth left. So let's do a setup. Let's make things ideal. Then on the day of surgery, when the patient comes in, scan. Okay, and you're gonna scan with the screws, upper, lower, bite, it's go time. Go through the surgery. Teeth come out, bone is adjusted, implants go in, multi-unit abutments go in, and then at that point, you are going to complete the OptiSplint intraoral uh, process. You're gonna put an OptiSplint on each of the multi-unit abutments. You're gonna insert the honeycomb frame, you're gonna loot them all together, you're gonna to remove it, and you're gonna put it on the bench top. That is the simple process of, of capturing the implant position. We have the implant positions. We do not need to relate this back to the bite uh, or, or the tissue or anything in an intraoral scan. The next step will be to scan the patient and pick up the, uh, the healing collars and the screws, just like the image there on the left. Okay, scan away. When you scan, you're gonna make sure you always pick up the screws or we lose the bite. Okay, the screws will, 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 will bring us back to the original scan. If your scanner is struggling, if you're struggling that particular day with capturing this, be prepared with a, uh, a stock tray and a lot of impression material and pick it up. See back here, there's two screws, four screws. This is, um, this is Dr. Charles, Dr. Jermaine Charles, a friend of ours who who completes these cases. He has four screws back here, and he does four because in his long experience of doing these cases, he found that tripoding was better with two instead of, with four instead of two. You will take this out of the mouth and you will take an iOS scan of the impression. And now we have the implant positions, we have the screws, we can bring this back into the, uh, the original scan of the patient, and then we can bring in the OptiSplint. So this is a matter of stacking files, and we are very good at it, and we, are, we have a, a very precise method for stacking these files together. But think of the simplicity you have here, right? You do a simple uh, um, IVJ, simple IVJ, take it out of the mouth, quick. Put the healing collars in and suture around. The patient is almost done at this point. Take a PBS or take an iOS, patient's done. That's it. Patient goes home or patient goes and relaxes while we get the case ready. The healing collars in, in, in our system, uh, there, there, are, there are many available. Uh, and there will, we'll add more as we move along. Uh, but as long as you have one of these, then you'll let us know which one they are in the RX. Uh, then we are integrated with, uh, with OptiSplint. Tell us which one and you're good to go. If you don't have the healing collars. For some reason, you don't have healing collars on the day of surgery. There's some, some, other, some other reason that you want to scan the OptiSplint in the mouth. That's fine. That's how the, the product has been used for, uh, you know, for the past year in the mouth. Let me just go, quickly go through this. OptiSplint is in. It's been all looted together. You will clean off the screws. These are the palatal screws. Clean them off to make sure there's no dried blood or anything obscuring them. Okay, it's all ready to go. Use your scanner. Scan. Now, when you scan with an OptiSplint, in the mouth or outside the mouth, you start in the middle and you scan the full area. You'll see this is pink. Okay, we have changed to white. They both work, but white's a little bit easier to scan. So you scan this area, scan the whole uh, uh, main plate, the main area of the OptiSplint. In this case, this was um, it's a really nice scanner, the Prime Scan, so the doctor actually grabbed the screws there as well. But once you scan the main area, then you start to come out. Let me show you here. Then you come out to a scan body, and then you go back to the original area. Now, in this case, you'll see they're going to come back, and then they're going to go out to another one, like this. 
and then they'll go back to the center, right? Go back to the center and just keep picking them all up. Now you'll see in this, in the rest of this video, the protocol was not perfectly followed. You see they went around to the labial and they captured a little bit of tissue, a little bit of bone area there. That's where you can get some inaccuracy with intraoral scans. We don't want any of those scans. We only want the OptiSplint. Okay, so I'm showing you a little bit here of what not to do. Okay, scan this, go out to each arm, out to each OptiSplint and come back, back and forth, back and forth until you, until you have it. Okay, and pick up the screws. All right, that is the intraoral uh, process for scanning the OptiSplint. And when you do, do it that method, then you have the option of scanning the, um, scanning the OptiSplint outside the mouth again. Okay, you can scan it twice. But when you scan the optic split in the mouth, then you also want to perform this scan here with the, um, with the healing collars. All right, so let, just, just let's do a real quick recap. Photographs, day of or, or before. Setup, before if you wish. Or, as you can see here, this, this case here, this is all day of surgery records. Scan the patient before with the screws, okay? Scan the, uh, scan the patient after with the healing collars and the, scr and the screws again to match, scan the OptiSplint outside the mouth. That is how this case is completed. If you scan the OptiSplint in the mouth, perfectly fine. Just also scan this, and then because we like the accuracy, scan the OptiSplint outside the mouth again. But what you see on this screen is what you're gonna send. These, these, uh, these files in a, in a folder on our website, you'll upload, that's it please call us to discuss any of this. Once we have the records, we will uh, design your case. All right, there's the screws. We have the case articulated with the screws. We have the case articulated now with the OptiSplint based on the screws. You can see them down here. That was our, that was our alignment. And then we uh, quickly uh, work with the geometries, design the prosthesis, and then we ship it to you ready to go, coping free, direct to multi-unit abutment, extreme precision, boom, go to print. Now, because this is OptiSplint, you have the ability, if you wish, to make a model. And with the model, if you wanna have copings, put the copings on the multi-unit abutment analogs, seat the, the prosthesis down onto them and loot them together if you want, if you want to have copings. If you don't want to have copings, perfectly fine. That's how most of our cases are done. If you do want to have copings, let us know. We're going to design these interfaces a little bit differently here. Uh, but at this point, all you have to do is nest, print, clean, beautify, seat. Very smooth, accurate workflow.